A wooden alarm clock? Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here and I'm looking at this. This is a wooden alarm clock. Well, it's not really wood. It's actually a plastic or I don't know, some sort of a laminate or something. You can tell because you look on the back and you don't see the wood going through the edges. It's just a yellow plastic that they've somehow infused with what looks like a pretty realistic bamboo finish. Now, of course, this is important because your time shows up through the clock surface. And in this case, it actually cycles between the time and the date and the temperature that the cube is experiencing. So it's pretty funny on Amazon. People are saying, how does it know the outside temperature? The answer is it doesn't. It's not that sophisticated. In fact, let's put this in context. This is the MyCar digital alarm clock wood LED light, and it is $13.99. So this is not pairing with Bluetooth. This does not talk to your phone. It is not synchronized with the atomic clock. It is a very basic rudimentary piece of technology, but as a clock it actually is kind of interesting so as you can see we'll just put it here and it'll just slowly cycle through time and date and temperature now if you don't like that you can actually suffer through the interface we'll come back to that in just a sec and you can set it to be just time and it'll just show you the time it can also actually have what they call the energy stretch mode or energy saving mode where after a minute or so it will turn off the display and then you either make a loud sound or you tap on it and the display comes on. Personally, I really dislike that. Why would I want a clock that isn't showing me what time it is? And the answer is because if you're using it off of batteries like I am here, then you want your batteries to last as long as possible. Now, it does work with DC in or direct current, and so it includes this little cable with its own little unique plug on it. Why it's not micro USB, I cannot answer you, but the other end is in fact a standard USB connection and there's no wall outlet. So you're on your own to have an actual power charger or anything like that. But I will say that using this cord probably makes a whole lot more sense because according to the company, the batteries do not last very long. In fact, if you have it on full on mode like this at the highest brightness level, they say the three AAA batteries in the back, here's your close up of three AAA batteries in the back, will last a week, one week. And if you actually put it into that um, audio or what they call voice control mode, then the batteries last a month. So this is not a clock where you want to run it just on batteries because I am not going to be replacing my batteries every week. That's crazy. But if you think of those as an emergency backup and you actually have it plugged in, then you're doing okay, right? So you have it plugged in and if you lose power for a couple of hours and then you have the power come back, which actually happens more often than people realize, then your clock is fine and you don't lose the time or date. So that's really nice. That's really what the batteries are for. Now, let's talk about these controls because the controls are very old school, which means they're super frustrating and annoying to work with. As you can see in the close up, there are four buttons labeled set and up and down and reset. And those are your options. And you just sort of suffer through this complicated system where you, you know, push a button and now it's the hours flashing. So you go up or down and then you push minutes and then up or down and so on and so forth. Not really that much of a crisis. It's a little tedious because I find that I want to actually keep flipping back and forth to make sure which ones are up and down. Although I guess you could just do that by practice. Um, but here's the thing. To be entirely fair, once you get it set the way you want, you're done. So you don't actually have to do that very often at all, possibly just like once every year or maybe every time you hit daylight savings time or not. So not a huge big deal, although while you're setting it up, like I said, it can be a little frustrating and it's like a flashback to like 1991 or something. <laughs> I wish it synced with my phone, but that would add another $50 to the product and it's probably not a $75 clock. I'm not sure that would be good. Now, you can switch between 12 and 24 hour mode. You can switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius for temperature, and it includes three alarms. However, I have not actually had the courage to try it because I don't know how to turn off the alarm. Probably it's the reset button in the back, 
but it is not an alarm clock where you just touch the top or something and then the alarm stops. So my guess is probably 99 plus percent of people that acquire this clock have it sitting on a shelf or sitting on a desk. Obviously it would be perfectly acceptable and actually look really good for an executive or for a dorm room, just having it on a shelf next to some books or something. That'd look pretty nice actually. And you know, if you can figure out how to snake this cord behind it, and that you can certainly buy USB extension cords. So if you look at this and you say, that is way too short, you can buy like five or 10 or 20 foot extensions, especially for this, because it's just using very minimal power. It's not actually a data sync cord or anything. So you could actually have this clock way up in the distance, and then you can have that drop down through extension cords to the power and wall outlet. So that's nice. It also has four luminance settings. This is the highest setting. And one of the things they've done that's really smart is that automatically at 6 p.m. it drops to half brightness and at 7 a.m. it comes back to full luminance. So without you having to do anything, the nighttime mode isn't as bright as daytime mode. That's good thinking on their part. So, what else can I tell you about it? Really, not very much. It's 3.6 ounces too, so it's super light, and that's with the batteries in. If you don't wanna use the batteries and you just wanna live on the edge, hoping that your power always works, then it'll probably be under three ounces. It's super small. This could be a nice little stocking stuffer or something, right? So, that's what I got. So now, before we go any further, if you could click on that subscribe button, I really appreciate it. Give me some candid feedback. I look at a ton of different products from $1,000 headphones down to $13 digital alarm clocks. Do you actually care about these lower end products? Tell me, leave me a comment, let me know. I think it's kind of fun to look at how all the technology spreads, but you might look at it and say, dude, seriously, stick to like actual gear. <laughs> but hey, this is also consumer electronics. So there you go. Now, finally, to sum it up, the MyCar digital alarm clock wood LED, and I actually kind of like it. It's, you know, it has its limitations. It's also super entry level. It is $13.99 on amazon.com. And if this is something you're looking for, a nice, simple, modest clock that's just gonna sit there and work great, then this might be something to check out. With that, this is Dave Taylor, and I'll catch you in my next video.